Hey everyone, it's Karen here for Artist Live, and today I have part one of a video of, of a project that I'm going to create. I'm going to alter a tag using Rust and Patina Paste, but today we're going to just create a composition and put all the things together. And next week, jo you will hopefully join me again on June 5th as I basically color and rust and create all the nice texture on it but today we're just going to be creating the actual tag so i'm going to turn the camera around and just we're going to get started so here is the project and i have to sometimes hold on till i get my camera properly and also, I can't see, no, it's not well. Okay, I prefer, I do prefer my other computer. So today the computer, um, the com my computer decided to do an update last minute. And because of that, I had to take my laptop up. So I don't know, hopefully you can see it well. And let's get some light here. Okay, so this is a project that I created today. I mean, I created it last week, and it uses a lot of the new, um, well, they're not that new, but I guess the rust and patina paste from Prima Fina Bear. Now they're, they're either available at the brick and mortar stores. They have like the big jars that are available at your brick and mortar stores, or you can buy the smaller three tube ones, which are also available there. You can buy them at Michael's. Um, so... Basically, this is the project that I create that I'm going to create and I'm going to put it aside so we can start with the new tag. I am using and let me just oops. I'm using a Tim Holtz. It's called Etc. Artful Things for Curious Minds. It's a Stampers Anonymous. It's a very thick and sturdy uh, tag. It's made out of really hard chipboard. I would say more like MDF. I think I think it's chipboard, but I'm not 100%. So this is the one, okay. And um, I just realized that. Hmm. How do I turn the setting off so it doesn't do that? It's zooming in and out. Okay. Sorry about that. You know what? I really did not. I really was trying to use my other computer because I have it already all set up, and then now it's it's going to zoom in and out and it's going to be annoying for everyone so i'm going to try and figure out the settings for this so just one minute okay um i didn't realize it was going to do this um how do i do that i did it on the other computer but i can figure out how to do it here well um, i apologize for this zooming in and out a little bit Hopefully by next week, everything will be okay for the second part. And for those of you who are watching this after, I apologize as well um, for all my talking. So this is the one I'm using. And the way I covered it, I mean, I, somebody gave me some recycled, uh, car, cor, corrugated, corrugated, oh, I can't say that, um, cardboard, which I already cut to the right size. This is just recycled one, but I mean, you can buy this one as well and um, I am going to basically glue it so the way I glued it is using some 3d gel or any type of gel would work actually I could use even the soft gel um, so oh here my computer is finally working great too little too late um, oh hi Janelle okay I can't see who else is cam who who else is here, but I see that there's other. Um, okay, sorry, I'm a bit distracted because the last uh, last minute my computer decided not to work and I had to switch computers. Okay, so basically all I'm doing is I'm just gluing this to the background. I really love using textures, and this is a way a great way of use of um, doing that. So there's so many materials that can create texture and I have actually a video coming out soon, hint, hint, uh, that basically gives you all the different uh, 
many different ways, not all the different ways, but many different ways you can create texture using different materials, whether they're recycled or not. And I'm using my silicone brush, which is a Prima Fina Bear uh, product. And it's really great. It's one of my favorite ones that, from the last release. And I've said this before, it's really much easier to apply things with it than it is with the palette knife. But again, you can do it with a palette knife or with paint brushes. It's not a problem. So all I'm going to do is just stick this on. And there we go. That is it. It's very easy. Yeah, this uh, so somebody's saying that they love the size of it, and I just to tell you what it's uh, this is. These are the medium ones, okay? They also have smaller ones, but these are the mediums. Oh, oh, actually, maybe they even have larger ones as well. I can't remember, but the medium ones is a good size. I mean, I don't want need something too too big, so this is a perfect size for that. And I actually did get these in my brick and mortar stores. Uh, it was store, sorry, which is one crazy. That the one I got this one at it was cramp, one crazy stamper but anywhere would work for that matter so if you can get it that would be great because it's really fun to alter the next step that i'm going to do is i want to add a little bit more texture so i am going to use some of the texture paste this is the white sand i mean anything could work you could work with um uh how do you call this uh, crackle paste or you could even take some of this thin art stones and or the other ones and create this really nice gritty paste I could have done that but this one is already done for you and I didn't have patience to go in and um, create my own right now or not sorry let me not say not patience but time because I really wanted to get this all done at least in the for, for the first part of this show so um, this time because it's such a gritty kind of paste I want to use the um, I do want to use a palette knife and you see how my palette knives are really dirty but it's okay because they use a lot of mediums so here is this so but I want to do is just add a little bit of texture in certain areas especially the ones the areas near the edges so all I am you hear how gritty it is because it has like actual I think sand in it I'm guessing um, so let me just take a little bit more and I'm not adding it everywhere. I just want to add it in a few certain areas to kind of add that texture. Later on, um, it's going to have even more texture because the actual rust paste and patina paste are very gritty as well. So they have this really nice gritty texture that you can, that give that really nice effect, right? So it looks like it's old. So... Um, so just applying it randomly I'm not actually caring where I do it I just want to have that texture in different areas and that's it okay all right just some here I mean I try to basically cover some edges and it's I don't really need to let it dry because I'm gonna be applying and other things on it so this doesn't really need to dry at all it will dry as I work with it okay now I have another step that I have to do so this can actually go here on the side and I'm going to show you I want to show you what how I created a certain product here so you see this um, this tag here not the tag the actual like um, thing underneath I don't know what it's called um, it's I guess it's like a, it's not a tag but it's something you know like a label but it's a thick one I want to show you how I made that okay um, in one of our other shows one of our, my fellow uh, artist Heather showed how to use this product on some embossing folders and this is a really great um, way of creating molds to use it inside molds and creating these really nice um, 
really nice uh, tags or and not tags, sorry, like the molds that I I showed you or the label that I showed you. So I'm gonna take these products out and they're really easy to use. This is called Amazing Casting Resin, and it's a resin that goes inside any mold, any silicone mold, and so forth. And I'm using today. Um, a Prima Marketing silicone mold. This is uh, labels. Okay, yeah, I was right about what they're called. I'm using, I'm making a label. And this is how it comes. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to create that. So this, the reason why I wanted to do this now is because I need to let this dry, right? So it has to, it has to work for a few minutes. And let me make sure that I got the right one in the right cup. Okay. So these are the three things, and I, what you do is you measure a little bit of each of these products, the two bottles, and you want one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm not exact on this, but I just uh, basically eyeball it because it doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to put the other one there as well. Oh, sorry. I can't really see the chat. I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Oh, I am missing a lot. Sorry about that. I hope um, I am sorry if I didn't say hi to all the people that are there. <laughs> I just realized I missed a lot of the stuff. I see there's some new people here. So thanks for coming. Um, so, okay. So I'm again, I'm eyeballing this. So I just want to make sure that they're same height. And if they're not, I will add uh, pretty close. Okay. And then you, so when they're apart, they're not reacting. As soon as you put these two agents together, they start reacting and they start becoming really hot um, because it's a chemical reaction. And I'll just show you what happens. So I'm going to mix them in the same one. And then you take it kind of, the kit comes with a little like stick like this and you wait until it's basically, you stir it until it's clear. And once it's clear, you pour it in. And it takes about 10 minutes to dry. So this is why I wanted to do this now because I wanted to make sure that it dries beforehand. So here it is. And I'm just going to pour it. I'm going to make this label here, which is the same one I use. And as it starts drying, it becomes white. The agent becomes white and it's really easy to use. Hold on, oops. I'm trying to get it into the corners here, and it's not working. Other one corner. There we go. All right, and then I'm going to make a second label. I have some left over, and I can already, already feel it warm in my hands. This one will probably be, I don't think I have enough for all of it, but that's okay. Um, the most important is the other label anyway, so I'm just kind of moving it around a little bit, at least so I'll get the form of the other one. Okay, good. So it's really cool because it starts changing within a few minutes. As you can see, even in this area here, you can see that it's, um, that it's turning a little bit white. Okay, so now I'm going to put this aside. And hold on, I want to... Okay, you can still hear me, right? Because I just turned the volume off of my uh, computer to make sure that you don't hear all the dinging from Facebook and different things like that. Okay, so we're going to put this in the corner here. And I'm going to try to maybe keep it so you guys can kind of watch how it dries on it, how it starts drying. So if I keep it in that corner, can you still see it? Yeah, I think you can. Oops, I keep on getting confused between the mouse from my computer and my laptop. Okay, so sorry, I just want to put these things back in the box so they don't get confusing with everything else. And then we're going to get going. So you can see here in the corner how they're drying and at the same time we're going to be working here. Perfect. Good. So yeah, you can also use for these molds, you can also use paper clay. You can use, um, oh God, it's doing so much zooming. I don't know why. It doesn't know what to focus on. Okay, I'm going to get closer to this. So maybe it will know to focus on that. Um, so you can also use paper clay. You can use like putty. There's different ways to 
use to actually create these molds and you can see already you see how it's turning white so this is what i meant it's really really fast okay so now i'm going to um add start adding the things that i want for this project so this is a really cool um, metal star it's like a barn star and hold on the, it's from it's called salvaged it's a large metal star star i bought it in actually another brick and mortar store near me uh, paper lane studio and it's called salvaged and it has many different things last time i used the wings from this collect from this uh company and now i'm using this star which i really really love it's really nice but i i was trying to use the use it the whole time i was trying to use it like the other way around but eventually i ended up turning it and using it this way because i just couldn't get it the right way so um so that's one thing that I'm adding. The other thing that I'm using is I'm using these wings from the archival cast from Sandra Evertson. And this, I just love wings. I'm not, I'm not, I don't like using wings, for example, on, on people or like, you know, people that I love or things like that. Cause like, I don't like the significance of it, but I do like wings for, you know, like things like hearts and stars. So that looks really good. And these comes, these are made, were made for making like jewelry and necklaces or just adding to your mixed media projects. But they do have these loops at the top because you can use them for like for jewelry. So I am removing with a little, um, plier I'm removing the the little metal loop because I don't want it in my project it's not necessary okay and they're easy to remove so that's good I'm just gonna have some resin here and I want to get stuck to my to my mat uh, the mat I'm using it's um, Ken Oliver mat and it's really great it's one of my good purchases for this year and I'm really excited about that one um, and this basically goes underneath like this I had to find the right angle for it to kind of stay and once I found the angle I had to remember how it went okay there we go and you see it's already it's still you know kind of drying white and in two seconds it pops up so it's really easy to use um okay another thing that i did so this is still way, w w working here so i really wanted to use i really wanted to use these barn stars i thought wow they're perfect for this i'm gonna use them and guess what i only had this one single one i searched everywhere and somehow i thought i had more but i only had one if i would have had an extra one i could have used it but i didn't and these come in these really great packages so I thought, you know what, let's recycle some more and let's use the packaging. And the great thing about the packaging, sometimes it comes with two of these pieces. So I actually cut them out. So there, it comes with an insert inside, which I use for the other project. And this is for this one. So I have to cut out these stars and I can maybe, while I cut them, I can look at the chat and if you have any questions about the resin about uh, anything I can I can basically answer while I'm cutting so uh, yeah so here I'm just trying to go back to the chat okay so there we go so I'm going to cut these around and because I wanted to kind of I what I did is I wanted to fill them with a uh, Hold on, I want to go around this. I wanted to fill them with things. And I'll show you what I did and how I fill them. So let me cut around them because what, what's happening here is that I have this ledge here that I can't cut around. Okay, good. So this is a really great way of repurposing things. Um, and, you know, using... So I save, I save a lot of these... I save a lot of everything, but I save a lot of these plastics and I tend to uh, want to use them for different things. So it's a great way of recycling. So between the cardboard and this, I mean, I know like, you know, things get expensive. So it's a great way of recycling a lot of things and getting and using things that you have on hand and not always buying. I mean, I know I'm... I'm 
I'm not trying to enable you or anything like that but yes there's a lot of great products out there and the key is to know what to buy and what you can repurpose so that's a really great thing to to kind of learn and when you learn that then you know like you know how what to use for what so there we go there is one star and this is a boring part but i have to do it there goes the other one and i didn't want to cut these in advance i could have easily just cut these in advance the reason why i didn't want to cut them is because i didn't have an extra one and i really wanted to show you where i got these from because then otherwise you would not understand that they came from this packaging they wouldn't it wouldn't make sense because they look like they're part of some kind of like um other type of embellishment so i thought it was i had to show you this mechanical they're, they're called mechanical uh barn stars so those are the ones where it comes from it comes from um and they're not the f i mean i I'm, I'm not a fussy cutter kind of person and i'm not exact i'm never perfect and I don't really care if I'm not perfect because nobody really sees it and um, especially when I'm filling these in and because they're see-through they're gonna be covered in things so nobody's gonna see them so and don't worry so much about perfection I did have a recent video where I specifically talked about that and how I you know in mixed media there's really no need for perfection that you just have to try and continue um, doing things and it will just you know things will just if you try and you experiment the things will just fall into place okay so let me just finish cutting these last two ones these are the little ones so hopefully they'll, they'll be quicker um and it's nice i like that this packaging had two of them because otherwise i would have had to think of other ideas of what to do i had some other ideas but I wanted to make sure that I use things that are available sometimes um you know I have collected things from past from the past and it's then I find them let's say at the dollar store or something like that and then they're not available for everybody anybody to buy and if you want to recreate the project or want to create something similar then it's not available so people prefer to have materials that are available out there and you see my impatience how impatient i am um because i want it to be done already and it's not so see i can get this one piece to come off maybe if i cut it upside down i think i did this after i got impatient when i was cutting them before okay there and one more star so there's that and the last one so yeah this is the most boring part of the show and next week feel free to join next week you'll be able to see um how i i color everything in and how i rusted which is my favorite part of it I do like building the collage, but um, my favorite part is rusting it. Okay, so, yay, I think I'm done. Okay, dokie. So wait, I just realized I forgot to do a step, which is to, do the, to add the string. So let me just get rid of all this. No, it's not wanting to move you. So, okay, so one thing that is really cool about this mat is that it's cling. It has a cling. It has a clinginess to it. So what happens is that everything gets stuck to it, which is good and bad. So it's good because um, you know things don't move when you're creating, but at the same time, when you're you see my struggling now when I have to move things around but at least everything comes off it so far anything I've put like gel have has gotten onto it just so anything has really been um has gone off it oh god where's my string hold on one second okay 
So, sorry, I had to run. I realized I prepared everything, but except for this. This is called butcher cord. It's to make uh, candle uh, wicks uh, for candles. And um, I don't know. I bought this for some things. I was helping out with something crafty. And I thought, oh, this is perfect for it. And I just want to use it to wrap, to create some wrappings around the actual um, pad. And before I do that, I want to show you, I know, let me see if this is, okay, so no, this is still not dry. It's almost dry. It's still really hot. If you actually touch the silicone, it's really hot. Um, okay, so the way I did it is I started wrapping these around. And I think I did it before I added this. So I'm going to use some masking tape, which is what I used in the other one. I'll show you the back for a second so you know that I'm not. Okay. So the back of this one, I was just holding it with masking tape. This is what I mean. I really don't care. This, these are things I made for my make for myself. So I don't really care if it's the back is like that. Um, I don't sell my things, so it doesn't really matter in that sense. Oops. Okay. So I'm just going to let it drop on the floor. And basically we're going to create these wrappings. And let's see how many times should I go around? I'm probably out of out of focus. I mean, not out of focus, out of the screen. Oh no, I'm still there. Yay, okay. I don't know why I'm so nervous today. I've been, I've done these shows for two years already, or three years. I'm with, I used to do with Prima and in Artist Life. We, I've done it for two years. It's been over two years. This maze was two years, yeah. And I don't know why I'm so nervous today. It's, but okay. Let's see, this is five. So a little bit more. And let me cut it here. Okay, okay. And I want to spread them a little bit. Okay, that's good. All right, and I'm gonna stick it on in the back. Um. Oh yeah, sorry, the butcher cord was there, I think, in the supply list. Um, and all the supplies are listed in my in the video as well, so once we upload it. Okay, so there we go. So this is just to add extra texture to it. And I did go in with a little bit of gel, just to make it like stay in place. So again, I'm going a little bit with my fingers, don't mind me. I know it's a lot of people don't like using their fingers for things, but somehow I love using my finger. First, I have more control over things, and it's just easier sometimes that there's no point in reaching out for things, for paint brushes and so forth. Um, so there you go. Okay. So just a little bit. I mean, there's going to be so many mediums on top that it really doesn't matter. Okay. So there is that. Now I want to also fill up, fill in these stars. Oh, again, I see I didn't prepare myself fully for things. So let me just let this dry. And I want to show you how I how I fill these in. One minute. So it's good to use a catch and tray uh, for this, but you don't have to. I mean, you could use just a box or anything you have. Okay. So what I use is I use these glass beads, crystal glass beads from Art Ingredients from Prima Finabare. But you can use any type of beads. It doesn't really matter. And I took a paintbrush. Uh, hold on, this is a dirty paintbrush, so let me just clean it. So I took a paintbrush and using the soft gel as well, I added 
it a little bit into the bottom of the of the star. Oh, it's dirty. Sorry, you won't see it, but still don't like the fact that my paintbrush is so filthy. So I'm really not good at keeping things clean. Some people clean their paintbrushes right after they work with them. Same with their stencils and with their um, palette knives. I'm just really bad at doing that. I don't know why. I should keep them better in better condition, but I don't. Okay, so again, so I'm pouring this in. And the nice thing about it is that it catches everything, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, this is the second one I'm going to do. And the reason why, okay, so now I want to explain why I wanted to use uh, the glass, the clear glass beads, okay? Because I really, first of all, I wanted them to catch the color. I wasn't going to cover them with gesso or with anything else underneath. Um, I've used these before, like I could have used art stones as well. But the thing when you're covering them with mediums, and you'll see next week what I mean by that. When you, if you cover these beads with mediums, then they get really thick on top. So what I use is that I'm going to be using another type of thing, which is alcohol ink, which will stain it, stain the glass beads, but will not will not uh, make them thicker. So they will stay as glass beads, but just will be a different color. So I'm just using here uh, some, hold on, I'm just putting some more. I just used the leftover from here. Instead of dumping them into the tray, I just dumped them into the next star. And I'm gonna continue doing that. Now I'm going to put some more in here. Okay, all right, so here I am with the next one, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pour it into this because only the bottom is sticking, like all, only the glue at the bottom is keeping the, them straight. The other ones are not sticking at all. Okay, there we go. And then the last one. So the cool thing about using alcohol inks, which you'll see next week, is that you can um, stain things, especially if they're clear, you can stain them and they take the full color of the alcohol, the, of the ink, sorry, I meant to say not the alcohol, and then the alcohol evaporates. So that's why using the clear, um, you know, packaging and the clear beads help with this. Okay, finally for the last one. Now the reason why I wanted to do things in two parts is because I really wanted to have it all really dry for next week. And it's important to let things dry. So usually things dry in about 24 hours. And it's important to let things dry fully before you're applying color or rust or whatever it is. Because then things start shifting and you and it's just really hard then to apply things. So imagine these beads being shifted all over the place because they're not dry enough. And I knew I really wanted to create a much more involved project. I didn't want it to be something simple. And I thought this was perfect for this. Okay, there we go. So now I have the four stars. And I'm just all I do now is just put this back and I'm sure a lot of people if you've done crafting or cards or with used embossing inks uh, powders I meant to say then you how you must have one of these and then I just dump it back in side oops and of course don't do that which I just did and everything went outside it slipped off my hand but that's okay I will clean it up Okay, so you see, I just spilled over here. Great. Oh, there's some more. I hear them. Okay. So now I have to adjust this. So now because it's clingy, the nice thing you notice, I don't know if you noticed that, what about the clinginess of this? 
it's probably not fun if like glitter falls on it but the nice thing is that you know how if you dump gleads on uh, uh, beads on a table or anything like that they just go all over the place notice how they all stayed in one spot so i just really can just pick them up quickly it's not so hard and that's silly but i didn't mean to spill them as i said i think i'm nervous and that's why it's, this is happening um okay so oh, i don't know i have my sister calling me and i think that she's picking up daughter so i am going to okay so sorry okay now i just picked up everything and here is my tag back so the nice thing about this is that i can even though things are loose i can go ahead and place them and glue them onto onto my tag and it's not a problem okay so that's um that's the nice thing about it so here is now we can go back to this which is the label and look how quick and easy it's gonna come out okay you just release it and push it from underneath and look how easy it comes out hold on i'm not i don't want to break it I mean it's still fragile so you want to make sure oops and voila there it is my label and this one which is a little bit smaller this one is thinner than the other ones you can make it as thin or thick as you want this one because it's thinner it's a little bit more like you can actually it was really, really cool you could actually like mold it and leave it like you know you can make a bracelet out of this god knows what okay so this is just an idea um so this is the idea that that i have so i really love this material it's so much easier than the paper clay no offense to anything i just it's I, it's, it's perfect for my patients which is not something that I have right now when I want to do things. So that's why this is, in terms of that, that's perfect. Uh, okay, so let's get going um, on, so, oops, sorry. Let's get going on the next step, which is, which is adding all the things together. And I'm trying to, okay, yeah. So oh, one more thing I wanted to add on to this is i want to add this is an also another label from salvage this is called antique crate handles they're so cool they have really cool things in this this, this salvaged uh, company i really like all their things and that's the wings that i did i altered a little while back and here is the um, and here is the the other so these comes with two labels so i used one label for the for the original tag that i did and this is the other one okay hold on this has a metal on to this yeah i know this resin the resin is amazing everybody's saying that they want the resin yeah the resin is great i have to say and you know what i've used this so much and it really lasts a long like i still have so much left it never finishes somehow okay so this actual tag came with little screws or here these are the little screws that came with it but I was not going to drill, so I just left it the way it is. I just, originally I had cut out the hole and then I realized that I wanted to use these tags, so I ended up just covering the holes and it didn't matter. Okay, so now we're gonna assemble things. And, um, okay, so I'm gonna assemble back things the way they were supposed to be. Okay and the other wing and i want the wing to kind of stick out a little bit from here okay there have the wing the wings are hard to maneuver they have these little things sticking up everywhere and this is the star that goes here then we have a star that goes kind of here and then two other stars one goes here and one goes like kind of over here yeah so that's pretty good the other thing that I'm using uh, that I used is this uh, mechanicals winged uh, wings and I put some up on top here 
And let's see which one do I want to use. I want one that is not too, too big. Or it doesn't have to. It doesn't really matter. This one looks nice. All right, that's good. Yeah. So that's that. And I also use these uh, mechanical stars. I think they're called mechanical stars. Yeah. Sorry, I put the thing backwards. But I'm going to, I added these to some areas as well. So I added one here because the, the theme was kind of stars. And let's see, where's the third one? Yeah, the third one goes, I think it's over here. So I only put three of those because it was kind of, I needed to kind of create that three rule. And then one star goes on top here. Okay, so that's the thing, the other one. Okay, and then I use from and then the archival cast also is this little baby that is spraying it's so i thought it was he was so adorable he she I'm not sure i thought it was really really adorable and i thought i had to put it in i just really liked it let me just remove the oops let don't want to forget any steps so hopefully I'm not forgetting there's only one step here that I haven't done yet but I will do soon okay and this little guy goes in here because he's praying okay he's praying for peace so that is that and the last thing and this is from Michael's I got but and it could be any anything you can use oops where's the words Hold on. I wanted to add a word. So now this is from the same one. Uh, I have two words left. So the other one I use faith. So I thought for this one I should use love. Because love is everything. And this goes here as well. So this is how the composition is. Now I'm going to, oops, I don't know where that came from. Now I'm going to glue everything, but besides gluing, I'm also going to be adding some of the art stones as well. So I'm going to use, you could use 3D gel, you could also use heavy gel, okay? So it doesn't really matter which one. Um, I think I'm going to use the 3D gel. I want it a little bit softer. And just to add basically everything and glue everything where I want it once everything is dry it's so much easier to work with so that's how I like uh, I like everything to be dry I'm very impatient and I don't want things I don't want things usually I don't want to wait but I know that sometimes you have to so that's important so let's start by gluing the actual handle so I'm just applying glue here and on the other side and um, just sticking it on. I just really like this handle. I really, really like it. Now that I have the composition, I know more or less where everything goes. So I just have to basically stick it on, which is nice and easy. Um, the only thing is the wings. I always have to kind of play around with the wings. It took me a while to get the way like for the star to fit perfectly on the wings because there's always one, that one perfect spot that looks good and that stays well. The nice thing about the gel is that it's um, see-through so it dries clear so it's not a problem if you know you get it on other things like I did over there. Okay, so the star and um, there is this star okay okay and I'm not going to glue the love word because I do want to color it a different color and I don't want it to uh, get a very um, oops sorry just my phone is ringing and I don't I cannot answer it uh, so I don't want the the word to come all rusted and thick with the paste so I'm gonna leave it off but I just wanted to show you where it goes 
and this is like the label because I wanted to create a really nice label to have in there. You can really see the intricate details with this uh, a cast resin. So it's really cool in that sense. Oh, I didn't put enough glue here or I don't know if I did or not. Um, so those will really show well once we put the other mediums, which I'm ex which is really nice to see. So that works well once you put everything on. So did I glue these? Okay, yes, I did. Okay, let me put this aside for a second. And I'm going to put a bunch of glue here. Um, now you see why I was I didn't want to do all of it in one in one class. As you can see, like it takes like a long time to set it all up. And I would have not had time, enough time to dry everything, right? So I really was happy that I had like a two week uh, opportunity because I could show her a little bit of a more involved um, project and still be able to do it live on the show. Okay, hold on. So there's the wing. Okay, that's the wing is good. Let me do the other wing. Oops. So I don't know if I'm missing anything. Hopefully I'm not missing. No. Okay, it's good. Okay. Okay, there we go. So yeah. Oops. I want to shift it a little bit. Okay, good. And I'm going to also put some, I'm going to put some glue on the, um, hold on, I just want to measure where it goes to make sure that it sticks onto that as well. Okay. So I, can't, I actually did this in two parts as well, just to make sure that I had enough time for everything. So I did let this dry overnight. So that was good in terms of like, you know, just figuring it out if it will actually work when I'm doing it live. Didn't stop me from getting nervous, but at least I was able to, to do it. Okay, I'm just gluing the wing and the star that goes on top here. Yeah, and then I'm going to glue um, then I'm going to glue this star on top. So here's this guy. And This guy goes inside here. Oh, there, he fits perfectly. Okay, so there's the composition. Oops, I'm a bit crooked. And the love one that I'm not gluing on right now. And I didn't put the stars also, I didn't put the stars straight. I really wanted them to um, kind of be side, sideways, except for the main star, because it's just the way it fit. I would have liked it to be a bit more like skewed, but it, I couldn't get it to fit with the wings, so it had to go that way. Um, finally, for the last step for today, until next week, is adding some of these. And the reason why I want to add them today is because I want to add that texture and have it all dry. And this is one of my favorite techniques from this year, because every time you know how it is, you end up having different techniques that you love for different times. Uh, so this is, I'm not going to use the soft gel this time. And the way it works is that I stick my paintbrush inside the gel and then I literally go straight into the actual beads and start gluing them onto whatever I'm gluing them on. And that way they're kind of random and also they go randomly on, but they also don't spread everywhere. Cause if I had to like kind of spray them on top, they would just go everywhere and not and not where I want them to go. So because this gel dries clear, and I do prefer the matte over gloss, of course, um, I'm just putting some of these art stones all the way down 
and they're just drying this way um, oops and they dry this way so this is what I mean you see how they're sticking out a lot and I want to make sure that um, that they have this downward motion and that they dry fully because imagine trying to put rust paste onto this it would be a pain it would not be fun to do because everything would move everywhere um, I do want to point out that when you do this technique uh, the beads do go into con the containers so I tend to either use one of the containers that are like kind of towards the bottom or use the same con or use the same container all the time for doing this technique so you're always getting the beads inside it doesn't matter or just keep an old container and just go ahead and just put some gel in it and then do this technique so there's many different ways of not contaminating things um, I'm not very particular about things. I don't mind the contamination because I just use it as just more texture for next time. But if you are very stressed about that, then the best thing to do is to do one of those three things. Either use an extra, con an old container or dedicate one of these only for beads and sequin because I use it for, I use the techniques for other things as well, like sequin and, and glass beads and different things. So just maybe just to have one container just for doing this, or you can just use an old container and uh, just, you know, just use it just for the, that occasion. So basically this is it. This is the composition. I'm going to let it dry for a few days well i guess a week because i'm going to bring this back next week and i'm going to continue working on it and you're going to see how we're going to alter it and turn it from this to this so let me just make sure that i did not forget anything that i was supposed to put on this because i do not want to add anything next week so let me oh this is too high up let me go down so we're going to oops we're going to turn this into that is that good and um yeah so i'm going to show you how i'm altering this next week and i hope you guys can join and so you can see this part two of this and thank you so so much everyone for coming i saw so many many different names i couldn't say hello to everyone but i really appreciate everybody coming and we'll see you all next week i'm just going to stop the recording and thank you and we can chat after that thanks so much bye everyone